Hello, everyone. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how you can take your preference for geeky things and turn it into the ability to gain your goals? That's what we'll talk about today. In Europe, they call geek smart people. Frankly, I think we live in a culture that doesn't value intelligence enough. So I'm very proud to say that I'm a geek. James Marsters. Today, we're going to talk about the book, The Nerdist Way, How to Reach the Next Level in Life by Chris Hardwick. For those of you who don't know, Chris Hardwick is a mainstay in the geek world. He's not only just a host, a TV producer, but he loves the culture. He created a website, a Twitter feed, all geared around the geek lifestyle. And he wrote a book trying to help people gain their goals in a way that he found fun when he was trying to gain his goals. And he wondered how can he trick his brain, his body, all these things so they start working for him instead of working against him. And he says that the most important part is the day he reached the awareness that he's the warder of his own emotions and not a prisoner of them. He says, quote, the interesting thing about our minds is that if we don't actively seize control of them, they will default to autopilot. He asks, are you a passenger on a ghost ship or are you the pilot? Or more importantly, are you a nerd? He says that nerds get really good at details. They're very meticulous. Have you ever played a quest with video games where they ask you to do 50,000 different steps and you have to do them in the right order? Once you learn you have that ability to pay attention to detail in a video game, you start to realize you can do it in real life too. He also says the nice thing about nerds is that we're full of information. We love learning stuff. And so we're full of facts. We're full of all sorts of skills and ability and knowledge. And he feels that if we could just put all of those things together, we could get our goals. So he has what he calls the simple formula of success, which is to, first of all, pick a goal. Second of all, focus on it. And third, that's it. Very simple. He does go on to talk about how to get goals with a few more steps. He says that you should take an RPG your life. And that means that you should go in and take the things that you want and turn them into a game. Give yourself prizes, set up quests, use magic weapons, and do all the things that you do in video games so that you can push towards your success in real life. He says that we have to design our game. We're not, quote, a helpless piece of seaweed that just gets knocked around by the ebbs and flow of a turbulent world. Right now, we're actually the game designer. We can't control everything, but we can build the structure around it so that it can be controlled. He says that you need to get some paper and start writing things down. And not just lists of things, but maps, skills, all sorts of ways you're going to design your game so that you can make it fun. He is one of those fundamental believers that writing things down makes it better in our brain, makes it stick harder to the things we're going to do than just putting it down in a digital world. So if you've never been a geek, the first thing you do when you're playing a role-playing game is you create a character page. And the character page is the page that describes the various characters in the game. But since you're just working on yourself, this will be your own personal character page. This is where you get to define your character. You get to assign yourself traits, all sorts of skills and abilities. He says that we are very complex beings, so don't condense yourself into just a few things. So if you're going to build a character sheet, the very first question you always have to ask yourself is, what's your name? It could be your real name. It could be your fantasy secret superhero name. And then there's a bunch of character traits that are going to be skilled based from one to five. To be honest, I like bigger scales for those types of things so that you have time to build. Make it one to ten. So the first type of skill that's there is intelligent. Are you smart? The second question is charisma. Do you have a magnetic capacity to influence other people, including yourself? Are you good with pets? Are you good with people? What about strength? Can you lift weights? Are you a really strong person? Or is it something that you need to work on? Then there's wisdom. I always find this interesting because I think as a kid, I really could not understand why in so many games there was a difference between intelligence and wisdom. What's the difference between the two of them? Aren't they the same thing? And then once you get older and you start realizing there is a huge difference between the two traits. 
There are very smart people who are not very wise. And there's very wise people who don't have a lot of book learning. Wisdom is more about making good decisions, knowing the way of the world, and understanding how things work. Then there's will. Do you have the ability to actually do the things that you want to do? Or is it something we need to work on? And then there's confidence, the ability to feel good and strong inside your own self. Are you confident about the kind of person you are? Are you overconfident about the person you are? But those are the basic skills. And you can rate yourself, like I said, based on one to 10. How good at those are you? Five is actually going to be pretty average. Don't feel bad if some things are under five, because again, we're going to start working on these things. He lists those individual skills, and those are mainstays of a lot of computer gaming. But I also think that if you had other skills that you wanted to list as an attribute, feel free to write them down on your character page. This, again, is you being the designer of the game. So you can write down what skills you want. Now, once we have the baseline of all our different skills, we can go through and start choosing our alignment. For those of you not in video games, alignments are kind of funny. They're trying to determine essentially what kind of character you are. Now that we know your skills, and in alignment, there's three positions, lawful, neutral, and chaotic. Then there's good, neutral, and evil. So you try to figure out between those two sets of characteristics where you stand. Lawful good would be someone who'd be a paladin, using their strength to defend what's good. Lawful chaotic is someone who likes to do good things, but they're all over the place. They're willing to do some crazy things to get there. That might be some days of Loki. That might be some days of Thor. They're kind of chaotic personalities, and you're not sure what they're going to do next. Someone who's neutral could go either way or isn't really trying to do anything good or evil or chaotic or lawful. They're somewhat seen in the computer game of trying to get things that matter just to them. They're not going with any sort of ultimate good or ultimate evil. He says if you're neutral, you're on the fence. You're not good or evil. You're not chaotic or orderly. And that might be someone like Snake Plissken, Jack Sparrow, those kinds of characters. And then there's evil. And he says that's a lot like the character Dexter. Dexter's an evil guy. But he's also doing things in a very methodical way. So that would be lawful evil. But again, this is your game character. And so go ahead and define what it is for you. He says next that we have to define our weapons. In a video game, our weapons would be something like swords or daggers or bows and arrows. In the world we live in, our weapons are going to be things like computer knowledge or organization. Whatever types of skills you have, go ahead and write them down. He even talks about crafting skills. But take all those things that you have that good ability to do in the real world and write them down as skills and again, rank them so that you know where you stand with it. You might build your skills in these areas too. Next, he says, comes the experience points. Experience points in video games is how we know we're going to get to the next level. So let's say you had a great workout. Maybe you're going to give yourself 10 points for strength. Maybe if you learn something, you're going to give yourself 15 points for knowledge. But keep the skills realistic. He says five points for easy tasks, 10 points for medium tasks, and 25 points for heavy lifting. If it's a big project, that's 100 points. But this is how we're going to level up from a 15th level writer to a 17th level writer. That's how we're going to become better at things we do. Then you have to define what your levels will be. Usually starts out that the first level is a thousand points and it goes up a thousand points each level you have. Maybe for those big levels like 10, 25, level 50, you have a higher threshold, maybe like 5,000 points so that you feel like you accomplished something big. See why I can't spend all my time playing video games? This is hard work. So your character levels are a big deal. But so are the individual skill levels. Those are a big deal too. Figure out how you're going to award points to the individual skills. Did you read a WordPress book? Maybe that's a skill plus two. Maybe if you look through all the navigations on WordPress, that's a skill plus one. But decide ahead of time how much effort it's going to take in order to skill up your levels too. And he says next, we have to draw our character. This is where the piece of paper comes in. 
Are you wearing armor? Do you have wings? Are you even a human? But draw something that really speaks to you. I'm not very good at illustration. I'm not very good at drawing things. So what I ended up doing was cheating. And I found a character on the internet that looks like what I imagined my heroic gaming character would look like. And that makes me feel empowered to go on with my quest. And if you feel like you're not actually ready to accomplish your goals or your body isn't behaving, so it's playing the game with you, you are the game designer. You have that ability to be the warden, he says, of this game. You're in control, not your body, not your mind. You can manipulate them. He says like Charles Xavier in X-Men, make it so. Do you see that? I completely mixed all my nerd stuff up. And he says that every time we do one of these quests to gain strength, to gain knowledge, to gain one of our projects that we're trying to get done, we will become better for it. These are about these small quests trying to get us into the big quests. And he says we have to know the why, right? When we're in a video game or any type of game, we just don't go into the tower, but we have to know what we're rescuing in the tower why we're rescuing whatever it is in the tower. So come up with your whys. Why do you want to achieve this game design skill? The point he brings out that when you don't get what you want, maybe you didn't accomplish the things you were hoping to get. In a video game, we would try another tactic. If we tried to sneak into the castle and steal the chest of gold and we failed, we would talk about what we did. We'd figure out what went right, what went wrong, and we'd go at it again. We just wouldn't stop or quit the game or just decide we're just not going to do this quest because we're not very good at it. No, we would keep trying. That's what makes us geeks. So now, if you've ever had a setback or you feel like things aren't going your way, now's your chance to start going after those things with your geek brain figuring out what happened. I thought this book was fun. It goes on to another chapter that talks about your body, and how to exercise and putting the whole thing together. He gives out a lot of exercises that he did to get strong. I thought the real strength of the book, however, was talking about this game. And honestly, I wish he'd spent more time creating the structure of the game so that you can play it in your life. There's some apps out there that try to gamify all our different actions. I did a review of some of these tools in episode 15 of the podcast and a review on the NozillaCast podcast where I talked about some tech tools that are nerdy enough to help you get your goals. You can review those. They'll be in the show notes. So I think this is a good step if you want to start creating your own game and trying to solve the issues you're trying to solve in your life and get the goals you're trying to get in your life. The more you can make it fun, the more you can make it exciting. And I think the point of turning it into a game is also about removing yourself from the situation. If you're trying to lose weight, and you end up eating a big donut, you feel bad about yourself and you think, well, maybe I'm just not going to do this. But now if it's a game, it's the evil donut monster trying to keep you from your goals and you succumb. You had a glorious battle and you failed that particular fight. But next time I will get you evil donut monster. The way we can make this fun, the way we can make it interesting and take away all of that negative emotion and turn it into a game the better off we'll be. And our fun entertainment quote of the week comes from Revenge of the Nerds with Anthony Edwards. Hey, take it easy. Computer's your friend. It wasn't meant to interface with the machine. Well, you're just beginning. Relax. It's no use. It's inhuman. Oh, it's not human. Only humans can be inhuman. Here, let me show you. Working with a computer is great. I mean, it's uh, it's godlike in a way. Because you can uh, have complete control. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. <laughs> you know, some people, they can create with their hands. But when you're working with a computer, you got to build something with your mind. If you're good, you can do something no one's ever seen before definite high. (laughs) See, when you're in control of the computer or the game, you can make 
any type of decisions you want. You can make the impossible almost seem possible because again, you're the designer. You get to decide. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great week. And if you didn't know, this podcast is available on the Facebook app, on various devices, and on YouTube. And if you're thinking that I'm up there narrating the podcast in live video, unfortunately, it's just a still. But even so, you get a chance to listen to the podcast in different areas. We're also on many different services as well. So tell a friend and let them know that they can listen to their podcast in all sorts of places, even on my website. <laughs>